Film Club. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Film Club. I'm one of your hosts, Andy Harrison, and with me, as always, it is Andy Donaldson. Hello. Every week in Film Club, we invite you along to watch a film with us, and this week, we are taking a look at the original Godzilla. Gojira, as it was named over in Japan, is a 1954 kaiju film, as they call it. Um, it's one of the very, very first, if not the first, um, telling the tale of Godzilla. And uh, it's, it's it's an island of people. It, the, the ships get like battered. Fishermen come back like, oh no, it destroyed us, it destroyed us. Almost like stories of the Kraken. Anyway, it turns out it's Godzilla. And, you know, the elders like, you know, the stories we told as kids, it's real. Godzilla's coming back. What it turns out to be is the atomic bombs uh, woke up Godzilla there's a scientist who's developed a, an incredibly awful weapon that's even worse than hydrogen bomb, and he plans to use it, but he's worried about his bomb um, being misused by humanity as a weapon of mass destruction. Andy, I came in sceptical as hell. I, I came mm-hmm. in so sceptical over this. I was thinking, I'm so sick, right? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm so sick of Godzilla. I'm so sick of, just with everything, um, King Kong. This is what I didn't understand, right? This film is 1954. Mm-hmm. We're talking nine years after World War Two, nine mm-hmm. years after Hiroshima, and um, you know the the, the the atomic bomb being dropped in Japan. You know that kind of fear. I am so surprised that Honda Ishiro Honda mm-hmm. has gone on to do a film talking about the you know the 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 the, the atomic bomb almost so freely when when the you know the Japanese are probably still living in a fear of of such a I know that you know peace and everything but of such a weapon of mass destruction the kind of fallout that it caused over there you know in an action fl- what is now known as an action flick or maybe not known as an action flick but anyway it's um bit it was deep this film's deep at the time Ishiro Honda had struggled to sort of convince Toho that it was the right move i think a lot of people at the time voiced the same concerns that you had you know the idea that Japan was still reeling from uh, the attacks like on Hiroshima. And what it ultimately ended up being was catharsis for them. It ended up doing so well because the Japanese public almost used it to get past that event. It was for them, it was it was a matter of sort of facing up to it, acknowledging the damage that it had done, understanding that it was wrong, and understanding that the world they were now in also acknowledged that what happened was wrong and that we need to avoid it in the future. I think that's the sort of stuff that that resonated with them. For me, the moments where this film is strongest is where it's making those sort of commentaries. It's where mm. the obvious ones, you know, Godzilla's attack on Tokyo is really sort of nail on the head. There's a moment where the, the, he's leaving that trail of fire and they're all yeah. standing there and saying, my God, you know, he's leaving this, this wake of destruction. And then the one that I think resonates the most is when you later see everybody in the hospital and everyone, yeah, there's yeah. the destruction and the after effects of war. 1954 is also sharing the same release year as them. So obviously Godzilla took a lot of inspiration from things like King Kong and the creature features of the time. And so did them as well. But it's interesting to see how the two echo a slightly different idea on the fears of nuclear holocaust that were sort of looming mm. over people at the time. In terms of production value, I mentioned to our girlfriend uh, this week, oh, we're doing, you know, the original Godzilla, 1954 Gojira. And she was like, oh, yeah, 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 I know that. We did it in, um, she studied film and media. And she said it was one of the first uses of animation in film. Now, I might be able to better um, mention what she said. I assume it's the first use of animation alongside live action. Is that correct? So, if that's true, you're going to have to elaborate on me. My understanding is that this is the first example of what's called tokusatsu, and that okay. is, um, for, for lack of a better summary, it is the man in the suit. It's the first example of, you know, see Godzilla ah. for the most part is a guy in a suit, sort of stomping around on miniature sets and interacting with, with miniature um, objects. The sort of thing that would eventually give us things like um, Super Sentai, which obviously becomes Power Rangers, 
um, in the in the nineties. The origin is all here, and uh, Tokusatsu is one of the things that like Toho would keep going with the Godzilla franchise. Even I believe people can correct me if uh, if I'm wrong down below, but I'm pretty sure the 2016 Shin Godzilla is also Tokusatsu. Interestingly, when it came to the first part of this film, you know, you had the explosions and everything. The audio at the start is rough. It's an old <laughs> film. And he, he, this is where I was like surprised. And this is where, you know, the, my skepticism um, was kind of like hitting its peak. And it's where you come in this film and these fishing boats are exploding. And I'm thinking, oh God, that audio is so hard to listen to. It's it's so like kind of, it's almost like a, like a very uh, low filtered white noise. It's just, mm. it's it's almost unbearable. Now, I take that back for the rest of the film. There's a really good scene where I think it's in Tokyo where they're trying to fight with him with cannons and machine gun fire. Then you obviously have the iconic sound of Godzilla, which is, it works because it's it's not distorted, it's compressed, distorted. It's it's all just horribly, a horrible sounding noise that, for lack of a better phrase, puts the shits up you. It's terrifying. Going back to that scene where they're shooting the guns, the cannons, everything's like, it's it's clear in compar- massive comparison to, to the start of the film. But even for a film at that time, it's, it's so clear in the... The audio and the attention to detail is amazing. But also the music is really good as well. The music is done by Akira uh, Ifuke, Ifukube. Those first few scenes where they're, they're, they're on the island and he comes over the hill and there's just snippets of his face and you're like, oh my God, there he is, there he is. But he doesn't dwell on him for the first part. He does let it run in Tokyo, but for this part, it doesn't dwell on Godzilla. It just gives you moments. It shows more the reactions of the people um, and their, t- their their fear, their terror of Godzilla himself. You don't normally get that in horror films anymore. There's some good examples. Cloverfield, whilst it's not the best film in the world to kind of build on what Godzilla was, but the, the, the whole marketing campaign, the whole start of that film is you never actually got to see the monster. You only mm. got to see bits, and it was that fear of the unknown. <laughs> I think in a slightly contentious opinion, I think that's what works about Gareth Edwards' Godzilla. Now, obviously, Godzilla's always struggled with like its translation from Eastern to Western. If, in fact, that very, is it the early 2000s or the, the late 90s Godzilla, the one where he's essentially like a Jurassic Park a T-Rex, that is hated by the, <laughs> the Eastern fans. In fact, it's sort of been written off as not really Godzilla. Yeah. When Gareth Edwards tackled it, I think he did that really well. You know, The idea of focusing on like uh, the impact of Godzilla and hiding Godzilla and maybe maybe teasing him. So this is interesting, right? Because actually, I think this is where you and I diverge a little bit. I hate that scene. <laughs> oh, no way, really? Well, really? actually, taken as a snippet, I really like the scene. I, I love like mm. everything you're talking about. I love the fact that he's focusing on like reactions of people and all that sort of stuff. But put into the context of the entire film, I really dislike it because it didn't feel like there was any sort of build up to it. It felt like that scene sort of comes out of nowhere. You know, that they're, they're sort of like they're hanging out. There's all this there's all this gorgeous mystery. I love the the first part of this film's mystery yeah, around like yeah. the mythology of Godzilla. There's an old man in the town who's telling people yeah. that's what it is, and people are like they don't believe him. It's this yeah. old it's old thing that, that hasn't awoken for year, for decades, for, for hundreds of years. Gorgeous sort of like world building. And then some guy comes running in and he's like, Godzilla's on the other side of the hill. And then they run <laughs> to right. the hill, and it's like Godzilla. It, it, it's just like I mean, to the most part, the effects in this work hold up really. In in this in this film, they hold up really well. Um, and then you have like this yeah. this guy in his in his suit for the first time, focusing on maybe the worst part of the costume, which is like the upper half. <laughs> and he's like poking over the the top of the hill like he's a Teletubby. He's coming to say hello for the morning, and not just obviously not film. interacting with the, with the scene. He's very much like disjointed from the scene. It's my one criticism, really, this film, is that I love the intent of it. I love the idea of it. I love the the thematic value of not just doing a creature feature and instead making it a creature feature that's about, like, the fears of nuclear holocaust and being a cathartic experience for Japan coming back from the, the horrors of, of Hiroshima. Like, that is such a good merit, and I, I appreciate what they did, and they tried to do that so, so much. As a piece of storytelling... I'm really not that keen on this film. I think the most that comes down to a mixture of character and pacing. I think there has a peculiar pacing, a peculiar back and forth of like introducing Godzilla, getting rid of him, going to boardrooms, having character interactions, mm. and just sort of flitting between a lot of that sort of stuff. And then the characters, yeah, the, the whole romance, the the love triangle, like that that as as hard as it is, it doesn't necessarily need to be there. Yeah, exactly. And it's one of those things where in Almost every Godzilla film, 
characters, human characters, have always been the ones that suffer the most. But I want to like it more than I do, I think. And I think the thing that's putting me off is the um, the strange structure of it. Now, Godzilla was also uh, eventually recut and reworked to be released in the West. So there's a cut of this film called Godzilla King of Monsters in which they insert a lot of uh, news reporter material and reframe the film a, a little bit to appeal to a Western taste. It wasn't until, I believe, the early 2000s that this version of Godzilla eventually was actually shown to Western audiences. Well, my first experience, proper experience of Godzilla was the GameCube game, Godzilla Destroy All Monsters, <laughs> which completely contrasts with the theme of this film. Ironically, that is the reason I disliked Godzilla as a film because I'm so used to, you know, the version that you're on about there, I'm so used to this kind of monster for the sake of being a monster and action flake and nasty storytelling mm. and give me give me that theme, give me the whole like kind of comparison to Atomic Bomb any day, like the Oxen Destroyer. I think one of my mm. favourite scenes is when um, the, the scientist, you know, her fiancé, um, Serizawa, is, is on about like humanity and he's, he's that, almost like that click it's not very well edited when she starts crying, but there's that uh, scene where he realizes that even if he destroys his evidence, he's going to have to kill himself. Yeah. And that made, that was like yeah. hands down the best scene of this film. I, I love as well, actually that final scene where he does go down in the diving suit. Yeah. And even everything about that scene, the atmosphere, the, the, even the effects works really good. The idea of being that deep underwater with Godzilla in front of you feeds into that sort of like uh megalothalassophobia going on like the whole thing's just mm. it's really mm. really nice um one little thing i have to give a special mention here to takashi shinmura yep who, i'm glad you picked him up yeah kambe kambe i love him he's in he's he's uh such a good actor he's one of japan's mm. best actors surely um we last saw him i believe in rashomon He's also in like loads of uh, Kurosawa work, like Hidden Fortress. Funny enough, um, Ishiro Honda actually is a longtime collaborator of, of Kurosawa. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. We'd be remiss to go finish this review without mentioning A.G. Uh, Sura Barrier, uh, who did the effects of this film, you know, special effects. Whilst, you know, that we're on about that scene alone, you know, the costume itself isn't perfect, it has aged well considering it's a 1954 film. Mm, groundbreaking. And that is... Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like the legacy this film has going forward. But even, you know, Godzilla aside, the use of special effects of this film, it's which makes sense, you know, the conversation you just said about uh, Kurosawa being a collaborator, a previous collaborator. Look at the use of effects and the use of fog in this film and the, the way it sets the scene. Even something as simple as like using high frame rate when you're shooting Godzilla so that you can actually make him appear slightly uh, yeah. larger than he is to give him that, that weight and that heft. Like it is clever stuff. I was blown away by this, like... I came in this so skeptical and I came out like, my God, that was a really good film. I did not expect when you mentioned it last week for me to enjoy it. I thought this was going to be terrible. Easily one of like the most influential creature features to have ever existed. Um, and one of the most daring in terms of what they were willing to talk about. So awesome. There is Godzilla. You can let us know, or there is Gojira. You can let us know in the comments below what you thought of the film, or you can hit us up on Twitter, as always. But Andy and I are going to be back once again next week where we're taking a look at the other contender. It's King Kong. Which I'm less sceptical after watching this. About. <laughs> so until then, get watching. Cheers, guys.